Hey there, welcome along to the Jennifer Kirk YouTube channel and today this is me, Jenny Kirk. I've got something special for you. Been shopping around, getting up a few bits and bobs from our local model shops. Always very important to support the local ones. And I found for you today a Hornby Shark brake van and this is in the Weather Dutch livery. It's a pretty good model so without further ado, let's take a closer look. <laughs> What we've got here is one of the Hornby Super Detail Shark Ballast Plough Wagons. We can see here the catalogue number R6456 and it's presented in weathered Dutch livery. It's a factory applied weathering. So we see there in the standard form factor Hornby box. We're going to slip it on out of here. And this was bought second hand but you can actually see that it, it doesn't really appear to have had a lot of use and it just goes to say that if you shop around a lot of the smaller independent shops you can often find second-hand items that uh, you can get for a really favorable price so not really have to break the bank and it certainly presents a much greater cost saving and we can see with this example we've even got a completely unopened packet of all of the extra detail in there and I'm going to talk a little bit about this we've got some um, air pipes there to go on the end and they are actually quite nicely finished we can see there they're in the red and the black and they do look very nice when applied we've also got a few other buffer beam fittings but what it has to be uh, advised here is that some of these when fitted will preclude you from using a, uh, a coupling in the NEM pocket so it's just something to think about now we've also got two further sets of ballast ploughs and these are so that the ballast plough underneath can be modelled in different positions with or without the coupling. And this just shows the attention to detail that Hornby made when they brought this model out. It was one of the earlier releases of their super detailed rolling stock range and this was back when Backman really appeared to have the market sewn up and it was very difficult for Hornby to actually break into that market and they came back out of it with this wagon uh, and a couple of others but this one really did stand out with the attention that went into it and we've even got a little picture there which is quite helpful it just shows you how to apply some of that buffer beam detail basically where it goes and uh, if we turn it over it also tells you about what to do with those ballast plows so you can see there the ones that we've got in the little packet just gives you a clue of what to do with that and that is pretty good because I've seen on a lot of uh, other wagons and locomotives as well they give you the little detailing pack but don't really give you much of a clue as to where all the stuff goes so that's a nice little touch there from Hornby right let's release the hounds and we can see here a wagon that um, I'm actually looking at the wheel treads and it actually doesn't appear to have ever been run. Somebody's bought this and it's something I've seen a lot with second-hand items from uh, shops. When you get them in the boxes, there's a certain type of person who's buying these, uh, not even taking them out of the box. They hang around for a bit and then they trade them back in and it makes for some really good bargains if you keep your eye open. So this hasn't even been run. Uh, it's a pretty good buy there. The Dutch livery I've always found has been a bit of an odd one. When it's clean, I don't think it looks very good in model form. It looks somehow slightly false. But with an all over factory applied weathering, it actually tones that down. And I really actually, I really do like this. The model itself has got a really good weight to it. For what is actually quite a small wagon, it does have pound for pound, weight for weight, ounce for ounce, quite a lot of, uh, of sticking power to the track. It's a very, very small wheelbase, and you can see there, it's actually shorter than a lot of uh, even the, the older style vacuum fitted freight wagons that have come from um, a variety of different manufacturers. And it's something that's to be said about these, in train formations, when you run these wagons, sticking them at the back 
isn't necessarily prototypically accurate. Uh, I know that there's kind of this, this feeling that the brake fan always goes to the back, but these were ballast plows in the main. True, they had the cabin in the middle with the stove and then we'd be used for personnel carriers to and from work sites, but their riding was a little bit rough if they were left to the end of the train because of that short wheelbase and it wasn't unknown for them to derail if run in that manner at speed between work sites. So what they tended to do was to marshal these into the middle of the train. So you would see these quite naturally in between rakes of sea cows, sea lions, dogfish, trout, uh, catfish wagons, just right there in the middle. The livery application, there's an awful lot of separately applied tempo detail and I have every faith that under very close magnification we're going to be able to read all of these works plates and um, other detail. We've got overhead warning flashes and also up there we've got the fish kind and this particular one is named a shark. It was something that uh, was a bit of a carryover from the big four companies and I think even uh, the pre-grouping companies before that, the engineers' wagons tended to get, for a telegraph code, um, a fish kind. So, you know, there was the trouts, the sea cats, the barabels, perch, trout, um, all manner of these different things. They all had a different name. And even after uh, the telegraph system was decommissioned, they did seem to keep up with this uh, tradition. And certainly new uh, wagons uh, have persisted and been given a uh, a fish kind uh, type name. We've got a TOPS code there of the ZUA. Now that signifies Z for an engineer's wagon, U for the ballast plow, and A for the type of brakes that it's got. This is air braked only, so there is no through pipe for vacuum stock. Hornby have produced this in a huge number of different liveries, and it's something that the Shark lent itself well to with changes in nominal ownership through the shadow privatizational sectorization period, but then on into privatization. Off the top of my head, they have appeared in early engineers' black livery, suitable for the steam period, and that's a livery that actually seems to command quite a premium if you come across that, because the number of earlier period modellers that uh, were particularly keen to have that in their arsenal. And it's one that I haven't really seen Hornby re-release an awful lot. Later on, they appeared in Engineer's Olive livery. And uh, then further on, we've got a Borksite Brown livery. I've seen it appear, Mainline Blue. Load Hall with the black and orange. Dutch livery, and then later on EWS livery too, so quite a uh, cornucopia of livery applications. The model features quite a good deal of separately applied handrail fittings there, and each and every one of these very slender bits is actually separately applied wire handrails. The underframe is a wealth of that, look at all that brake rigging on there, even places where you're never going to see that because it's, it's going to be underneath the wagon. Um, it really has um, got a massive attention to detail. The buffers aren't sprung, but really they don't need to. They're the correct pattern fitted on there. The couplings themselves, they're in a NEM pocket, but with those separate uh, ballast plows that are available in the packet, you can replace that with one that doesn't have a cutout for those. So you can use three link couplings or indeed just park this on a siding and it will look every bit the prototype part. Inside the end cabins, we've got the accurate rendition of the ship's wheel in there, which was used to raise and lower the ballast plow. They are all separately applied detail. It's actually all picked out in so many different colours in there. There really is nothing to fault about this. It's one of Hornby's finest wagons, and I'm very pleased to have been able to have picked up this example in a new livery to me, and it will take pride of place in my collection. Well, I hope that was informative to you. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, share and also subscribe and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, it's very important for me, for you, to take very good care of yourself. Until then, bye for now. Today's video was brought to you in part with the generous donations of those who've supported me on Patreon. A big, big thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson. If you want to see your name in lights, then pop on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.